In this week's video, we're pulling my patrol apart again. The electrics really need some attention. I reckon this is the third time. We've got the Dash 200 lithium battery going in, so I'm gonna give that a test. I'm out of uniform because it's Saturday morning and I'm just gonna get this done. Um, using the 10 gang switch from DriveTech on this one. Uh, it's good because it's got a Bluetooth app and then I can um, use my phone to turn things on and off if I'm at the campsite or I'm at the front of the car because I wanted to um, control at the front of the car without having to run two boxes, which I could have done with a road vision, but um, then it's not Bluetooth. The road vision's got fuses and relays built into the control box. This does not. Um, I'll show you the control box. It's over here. Um, that's it. So I've had to run my own loom coming out of it, just like trailer wire. And this is all only 10 amp channels as well, whereas the road vision is 20. Um, but there's no fuses inside here. So once I fix that, like the control box is probably gonna hide, I'll clean this up later, in here somewhere. And then all of that's gotta go out because I want the fuses in an accessible point. I don't want them like here because then I've gotta pull the floor up if something blows. So I've got all 10 of these fuses, which I've gotta run on top of the floor inside the fridge cabinet. And then all the wires have to come back out of that um, to the various lights, the water pump, um, you know the things i'm going to switch on and off travel buddy that sort of thing uh so it's it's a considerable amount of mucking around i don't think anyone in their right mind would choose to do this you just do the road vision but i really want that bluetooth app um and i'm hoping i can get it to come up on the ec off-road screen at the front because that would be the ultimate sort of controllability tools of the day hydraulic cr crimps yep got that blades yeah that all makes kind of sense we're doing some big cable uh yep Cable tires, grinder, and safeties. When the grinder comes out and you're doing electrical, that's when you know you need to start wiring. But it's because I'm gonna use the universal battery strap um, to manage all this power. And for the BCDC, I need power in and power out. So I'm gonna cut that bus bar and have one MIDI fuse on its own. And the rest are gonna be like, um, like a bus bar to all my other power things. I'm up to setting up the um, universal battery strap. This will be designed to go in the back of the fridge cabinet, um, powering everything. So that goes on there to make it all neat and I can manage it all. Um, I'm actually gonna chop that last terminal off um, for the BCDC. So there'll be BCDC in, out, if that makes sense. But um, yeah, tip for new players, when you're putting this together, uh, all these screws, like that one, that one, that one, that one, all of them put in loosely um, because there's a bit of variance because then when you go to put the bus bar on like then it will fit on and then you go back and tighten them all up right edit this won't fit on here unless we do a chiropractic maneuver because there's little tiny gaps in between here when it comes straight out the box what you need to do ah, does your back feel better now yeah. now when I pop all these off Yeah. All the holes will perfectly line up. Same with, you can see it comes with like two washers, spring washer nut. Get rid of all of that. You're gonna need one spring washer, one nut. And just, so instead of having it like that, because you're gonna be putting the bus bar on, that's good enough to go straight on. But on this side, you wanna move that washer over here. So you've got two washers on the bottom. Then the terminal, washer, spring washer, um, oh sorry, you fuse on top, then washer, spring washer. And then when you need to take all of these off, it means the fuse will be level and it won't be under the bus bar. You want the fuse on top of the bus bar. Otherwise that would be a nightmare to fix. This is where we're up to. I moved back to the front of the car because it was getting all cramped up in my neck in the back. Um, but yeah, I'm not claiming to be an auto electrician, but I think, well, if you look at the before photo, this is heaps better. Still gonna do a winch isolator a bit better, but yeah, it's just a struggle to get them all nice and neat. But I think that's as good as it's gonna get for the amount of cable in this car. Moving to the back of the car again now. So you're about to get your first look at the Dash 200 prototype battery. Uh, I've got the base battery here. You can see by sticker that I've made up, there will be like a, a good proper one when you get one, but it's all gonna hide underneath the floor. 
Oh, this is the new Dash Air outlet as well. Uh, I'll tell you a bit more about that later because there's something going on with that and onboard air switching. Hopefully you're starting to get an appreciation about how many buttons and switches and wires have been run and to get everything neat and tidy under the floor has been nothing short of a miracle. And the big reveal, this is the um, dash fridge cabinet with the um, uh, drawer fridge in the front of it. Uh, and in the back, there's enough room to do all this electrical. So that's gonna spin around the other way, have BCDC. Um, there's gonna be a lot of wires actually coming in from this side because everything that comes from the 10 gang switch is going to be in here, um, all fused, because I don't want my fuses under the floor. I want them where I can get to them, you know, uh, in anger. But there's a lot of cable about to go on here and it's just like trying to work out how to get this neat now. So um, this is my best option so far. So we recorded the first half of this video in winter and the last bit is going to be in, well it's now summer, it's 1st of December, because um, I wanted to tell you that um, like all these things that we're putting on the car actually work, so I've tested them out. Um, so this is one new one that's up. This is um, the winch isolator bracket. I used to have this like homemade dodgy bracket on there. So now I've got like the perfect position for it to sit in there and that doesn't foul on the bonnet. Um, and with TILs, uh, where you have like an extra little um, uh, sensor for the bonnet, it doesn't foul with that either. All right, I think I should take you to the back of the car and show you how that worked out. This is the exciting bit now, because this is like the outcome of all this work and slaving that I've done on this car. I'm going to open it all up and show you my whole, I guess, like camping setup for quick lunches. Um, get into the back. I do like how I can open that with one hand, actually. All right. This is the slowest thing about a TIL, waiting for that to come up. Pull the fridge out. This is like essentially setting up as if I'm gonna, you know, cook up a steak for lunch or something like that. And the inspiration for doing this whole thing, really. Just wanna put my back to camera here. All right, that sits like that. Goes like that. This clips in here so it doesn't get caught. Did that well. Plugs into the GPO. All right, and then um, nothing that we sell, but this is like this new bag, Adventure Better from Mugu. Saw it on another Y62 uh, channel actually, quite like it. It's very clever. So it's got everything that you could want in here. Um, even a spot for your paper towel to go through the bottom there. And someone's flogged my frying pan after all of that. All right, I'm not gonna show you that bit, but you can see the get up. Um, all right, let's show what all these buttons do up close. So we'll start the tour on the driver's side here. Um, uh, inverter on off button. If I was ever gonna do this again, I wouldn't put my inverter remote button the opposite side to my GPO, which is on that side. Um, Wi-Fi or cell fire go, which is all hidden underneath, but that's the antenna, cool spot for it. That's that drive tech switch, all the buttons and everything that I use here, I can actually mirror on my phone or on the dash. So if I go to that button, that's essentially mirrored. So if I wanna turn any of these things on, on turn my Wi-Fi booster on there, and turn it on, or I can turn it off. Pretty cool, so that's all wireless. I'm still running the safe read light switches, so this one's got my um, lighting for up here and I can turn that to white and I can dim it or brighten it however I wish. Um, so I still use that. But then the top two lights are for my roof rack lighting. So um, I'll turn both of them on. You can see they're coming on and off. Um, bit of a trick with this switch though. These three, one, two, three, are, uh, have got a two amp load. This one's got an eight amp load. And the reason for that is the two amp loads are dimmable, so I can press and hold, and I could dim that light up or down on the roof rack on this side, but the eight amp outlet um, is non-dimmable. But I could put a much brighter light on there if I wanted to. Just a little quirk of, of that little device. Um, all right, let's swap sides, shall we? Uh, all right, let's have a look at this side. All right, so I can use every bit of switch space possible. I've got another switch just here. 
and that is my water pump. So essentially, I bring this out for when I need it. Let's say I wanted to have a shower or something like that. <laughs> Watch out. So now, <laughs> that should be doing something. It's broken. All right. All right, looks like I need to buy a new one of these. You can see the concept though, can't you? All right, that could have been a really cool shower. Um, and then I've got extra buttons um, that I can use for later on as well. Um, but I used to, before I had the drive tech switch, I had to use that switch to turn everything on and off so I could get my eight. Now I'm just using that for water only. Um, got twin air outlets. Oh, how good's the camera lady? Whether you can see where the air comes in down there? Probably not. Um, but so I've got the ARB air control controlling all the air that comes out of either EMU wing. So if I want to air my tyres down or up, basically I set it on the app on my phone, it airs down to 15 and stops, or if I'm recording on camera and I want it to go to 40 psi and stop, I can do it and I can run two hoses uh, and do two tyres at the same time. Or use that Morflate thing and do the whole lot. Um, there's four air, air outlets on this car, two in the windows, one straight off of the tank at the back, and then the other one, good segue, um, is around this other side. So the air outlet here, this is one of the new dash ones, um, works with the dash compressor, braided line goes down um, to the compressor underneath, um, but this one is not regulated by the ARB air control, so I can get full pressure for pumping up tyres, blowing out the back of the car, all that sort of thing, and it's just easy to get to. Um, new feature as well, I'll put a dual switch in here, so depending on how good you can see it so that switch there when the ignition's on um, will turn the compressor on from the back of the car or i've got another one um, where my onboard air is at the front of the car so if i turn the or forget to turn the compressor on um, i can do it from here or if i forget to turn it off you know you've pumped up whatever it is the compressor stops and then you drive down the road and goes, Brr. Ah, i don't have to get out the car and, and press a button here i can do it from the onboard air at the front of the car and if you want to know what this is that's on another video coming up very soon with your transmission so this is a piece of resistance so i can have a look at um, <laughs> the barometric pressure if you're into that sort of thing um, what my dcs 80 start battery is doing um, and then i can have a look what each of my circuits are doing so i've got um, a shunt which is measuring everything then i've got a shunt which is measuring my um, 10 gang switch it's drawing 4.8 amps at the moment which is probably the fridge running um, my safety lights all around the car i can see what it's drawing um, the andersons so the amount of times when um, i've connected the anderson up for the caravan and then i suspect it's fallen off and the only way you can really work it out is to get out the car and go and look now because this mirrors to my screen or my phone uh, I can have a look on the dash or on the stereo um, if my Anderson's got current running through it or not. Very cool thing. Um, BCDC and solar is on the same circuit, um, so I can tell if there's sun's out. I'm parked in the shade at the moment, so there's probably not lots going on. Um, and then the total. So if I turn the in induction cooktop on, um, that will start firing off, and I can have a look at the whole thing. Um, it's got the volts down here, uh, and total amps, current's being used. So. Essentially, if you're going to get into a car which has got this much buttons, um, you need to manage it all. Um, so I'm a big fan of the Wi-Fi, although it's a lot of extra work, and I'm a massive fan of the Safery Pico just for measuring everything. You might think I'm scared of the dark. Um, <laughs> I just like buttons and lights. So I've got the lights up here um, and the dash three-quarter roof rack. But then um, I've been playing around with this laser lamp to go on the back. It fits perfectly. Like there's not even any modifications required. It just bolts straight up to the dash center carrier. Um, and it comes with like this uh, yellow filter over the top of it as well. This is probably one of the best work lights I've ever used. Um, for a homogenous beam, white to white, um, like edge to edge. And the fact that I can turn it on from here is so cool. Although being, there's a lot of gold in my car. I like having the yellow light like that. I'm going to show off because I can turn my dash fans on 
either from my phone here, or I can do it from here. Or I could do it from the stereo at the front of the car. <laughs> There's no shortage of buttons. Same with the uh, travel buddy that's in the emu wing just there. I could turn it on here, although you've got to turn the dial on first. Turn the oven on. Um, this is the thing I've had to remember. So what I do is I set the dial, put it on whatever temperature, um, and then I'll turn it off on my phone. And then as I'm, I'll load the pies and everything in there. And if I'm doing a big trip, um, then it's like, ah, oh, 11.30, time to turn the pies on. As long as the timer hasn't run out, then I can press the oven on from the front of the car. I don't think I get a better light though. This is the snap-on light. I think I can do better than that. I'll get there, I promise. So what started this whole thing was um, uh, changing the battery. So the 120 amp hour was like great and we designed that to perfectly fit in the back of the, or under the floor. However, I just wanted to see how far we could push this thing. So all year we've been working to get a 200 amp hour dash battery under there. It fits just, it's tight, but it fits. You've got to cut out the little, um, uh, where the jack goes, there's a little bit of metal there. Basically, you just um, uh, cut those like tack welds off, and then that gives you the extra space. But this battery, I can't kill it. Um, like, I brought my car into the workshop last Monday. Uh, it was in the workshop all weekend, and it came out, and the battery's still on 13.1 volts. Just running the fridge the, the entire time. So it probably still had another three, four, five days to go. Um, I've been doing induction cooking. I've been really hammering it as much as I can and I just cannot get this thing to go flat. If you drive your car once a week, like it seems that's enough. That's incredible. All right, so um, that's going up, if not already on the Dash website, the new 200 amp hour battery. And we'll probably do another specific video later on that one. But uh, it's been in my car for probably six months now and I'm wrapped. And that wraps up the whole video. So. Um, I will see you next time on Dash Off Road, or don't forget our other sister channel. Channel, it's um, uh, Workshop Warriors. You've got to go over and hunt for that, and we're going to be putting content more workshop-related on that channel going forward. So see you next time on YouTube. Yeah, yeah.